Welcome to Intermediate Macroeconomics. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Professor Liam Malloy. I'm the chair of the economics department at the University of Rhode Island. And this is going to be a series of videos covering uh, intermediate level macroeconomics uh, using the textbook uh, by Olivier Blanchard, uh, Macroeconomics. This is the seventh edition. I actually had the first edition in college a few years ago. And I think there's an eighth edition now, but I haven't seen it yet, so we are going to stick with the seventh edition. So the book really starts with, you know, a, a tour of the world. We'll talk about that. Our course will focus mostly on the United States, but not exclusively. Um, and we'll talk about sort of the basics that we're going to do here. Chapter one and two are really sort of a introduction to the book and a review of what you covered in uh, Principles of Macroeconomics. So the big news in the seventh edition was the financial crisis. Now, obviously the big news these days is the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we're gonna talk about that uh, as well. We'll update a lot of our numbers. We'll also sort of think about what's happened you know, between the financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic and what we can expect um, in terms of recovery from uh, the pandemic. So we had been in a fairly long expansion from 2000 to 2007. Uh, the housing prices had started to decline after a housing bubble and that led to a lot of the financial institutions going into crisis. Um, that financial crisis, as had happened during the Great Depression and in other places around the world throughout history, had led to a major economic crisis with falling stock prices, rising uh, unemployment rates, falling growth. Um, and so we were in a recession uh, right at the end of 2007 that really accelerated in the third quarter of 2008. So this was obviously a big problem, not only in the United States, but around the world. Uh, countries like Greece and Spain were hit even harder than the United States um, and have taken a long time to recover. So here we see um, output growth rates in the world, um, advanced economies, which usually means the OECD, uh, which is basically Western Europe, the United States, um, Mexico, Japan, South Korea, uh, basically the uh, richer countries. Um, and you can see that we had negative growth in you know, 2009, especially in the advanced countries. Other economies were hit similarly, but they have been growing faster. And so uh, they stayed positive and the world economy sort of dropped to zero in 2009 before recovering. Stock prices also were hit. Um, this is not uncommon, right? Usually stock prices go down during a recession before recovering. It's good to remember that the stock prices are, while they're related to the economy, they are not the economy. And so, you know, for instance, right now in 2021, the stock market's at an all time high, despite uh, the economies of most countries uh, still being hit by the COVID pandemic. Uh, and we can talk about why that is uh, as well as we go along. So the COVID-19 pandemic obviously started about a year ago. Um, it was first identified in China at the end of 2019 and, you know, by early 2020 had really spread across the world. And so by March 2020, the United States is saying, all right, we got to shut things down. Uh, the economy starts to feel a hit, right? So the first quarter growth fell by 1.26%, GDP falls by 1.26%, and by almost 9% in the second quarter. These are really unheard of numbers in the United States in modern times. Um, it rebounds in the third quarter, 7.5%, but we're still significantly lower um, in, you know, by the end of 2019 than we were at the beginning of 2019 or the end. Um, so we're 3.4% lower uh, by the third quarter of 2020 than we were at the end of 2019. And employment uh, is down by about 10 million people um, from February 2020 to December 2020, despite having uh, recovered somewhat significantly, right? It hit a low of 130 million in April 2020, which was down 22 million. And obviously this is a very different kind of recession, right? Because it's not about demand, 
It's not that people aren't buying enough and so firms don't have to produce as much and therefore don't need as many workers. It's really about the fact that we can't do a lot of the things that we usually do, right? We can't go traveling, we can't go to the movies, we can't go to restaurants. Uh, and so it's a very unique situation uh, compared to most recessions. So if we look at US GDP growth, this is a number that with this graph goes back uh, to about 2008, 2009. We can see that, that recession from the financial crisis. And then it kind of bounced around as it does, usually between zero and two and a half percent. Um, this is, these are quarterly numbers rather than annual numbers. I think the next graph we have is annual numbers. But then you can see it shrinks dramatically um, in 2020 before rebounding in the third quarter. Um, and we'll see how it does in the fourth quarter of 2020. Those numbers are not quite out yet. Um, here we have sort of actual GDP, right? So U.S. real GDP. Remember, GDP is a measure of the value of how much an economy creates uh, in a year, right? And so even when um, the Bureau of Economic Analysis reports quarterly GDP numbers, they give you an annualized number. So it's as if, all right, what is the annual number for Q3 2020, for example? And you can see, right, we fell in the first quarter of 2020. We fell again in the second quarter before rebounding in the third quarter. We rebound, I think we're probably going to rebound somewhat in the fourth quarter, but we're still going to be below where we were um, at the end of 2019. And here is employed, right? So when we think about why we care about macroeconomics, employment is one of the main reasons since most people generate all of their income or most of their income from their employment. Um, and you can see we had a fairly steady increase in employment um, after the financial crisis. Uh, getting up to 152 million, a little over, uh, before it basically fell off a cliff because of the pandemic. Uh, and then it recovered pretty quickly, but then we had, you know, basically a sort of more traditional recession that's sort of coming on because people aren't buying, firms are starting to lay people off permanently, and we're seeing now a dip. And actually, this actually fell from November to December. Uh, in 2020 and so we'll have to see how it goes once vaccinations start taking place and people start spending money again. 